The Pokemon community is often regarded as one of the most toxic fandoms out there, and in my 7 Deadly Sins video, I showed you all how it consumes and plagues the world, but not everything is doom and gloom. In the dark, you'll always be drawn to light, and this holds true in the Pokemon community. Although many perceive it to be an awful place where people fight constantly over anything, not everyone's this way. There's honestly a lot of nice people out there being the best person they can possibly be. The 7 Heavenly Virtues are what we should strive to achieve. If everyone works together, we can make the Pokemon community a better place. Probably. I guess we should start off with humility. Humility can be described as knowing one's faults, being humble, and acknowledging that nobody's perfect. I think we can all learn a thing or two from this virtue. People get really defensive if you say one little bad thing about something they like, and although you don't have to agree with them, you should still be able to admit that your favorite things are flawed. I really loved Scarlet and Violet. It was the most fun I had with a Pokemon game in a while, and I know that it had a ton of bugs, and the frame rate was awful, but I still really liked it. I'm aware of those flaws, so I understand why some people wouldn't like it. I mean, hell, I often complain about Sword and Shield, and if those two are your favorite games, all the power to you. But some people need to understand that those games have their fair share of flaws too, and it's okay if people criticize them. Thankfully, there are quite a few people who are willing to have a discussion about the things they like and dislike about Pokemon without getting mad, showing humility. There's other things that humility can apply to as well, like Pokemon battles. We all know those people who blame their loss on you cheating, or their billup had the controller, or maybe they were lagging. Whatever bullshit they come up with, it's never Never their fault, and you know that's a lie. But there's people who take their loss with stride, and are just overall a good sport about it. They admit defeat. A loss isn't the end of the world. It's okay to lose. You just need to pick yourself back up and try again. I know this might sound silly, but when I was really young, I was playing Rocket League, and this random guy on my team had his mic on. Of course, I wasn't the best at the game, and we lost, but he didn't get mad. He just laughed it off and said something that has stuck with me forever. You can't win them all. And he's right. It's impossible to always win every single time. Losses are a part of life, so instead of getting stuck up on them, take it and move on. Thank you, random Rocket League man. You engraved a very good lesson into my young little brain. There's still another way you can spin this, though. There's people who are willing to admit that they don't know everything about Pokemon, and that there's still so much they can learn. Um, actually, in Season 9, Episode 54, Dawn is seen eating a cheeseburger with Hiplop, so <laughs> you're wrong. Not everyone has to know everything, and that's okay. That gives you the opportunity to spread your knowledge, not belittle them for not knowing. The more you know about a topic, the more you realize there's so much left to learn. Charity is the act of giving to those in need of it and being helpful to others, not expecting anything in return. There's surprisingly more examples of this than I thought. The Pokemon company has made quite a few donations in the past, helping tons of people in need. In 2022, they donated $25 million to organizations that help support social equity, lives of children, and other causes. They also donated $200,000 to Hawaii after a wildfire. And these are just two examples. There's a ton more, and that's already so much money. No matter how how rich you say the Pokemon company is, $25 million is still $25 million, and that money is helping a lot of people, which is really nice of them because they really don't have to do anything at all, which is sad, but it's true. Not only that, they also give back to us in the form of mystery gifts. They've been distributing these for years. Sometimes you have to go look for your own code, and other times they provide a universal code for everyone to use. They've given out some pretty cool Pokemon in the past, like Shinies, Legendaries, Pokemon with exclusive moves, etc. I remember during during Generation 6, Game Freak was giving out every single mythical Pokemon for their 20th anniversary. I almost wasn't sure if this happened or not because I was having a lot of trouble finding things about this online, but I do remember my brother pestering me every month to get them, so I knew it had to have happened. It's really cool of them to give these out because although it's such a simple little thing, they really didn't have to do any of that, but they did anyway. Game Freak aren't the only ones distributing Pokemon though. Some people just like to give out rare Pokemon when surprise trading, whether they be Breejects, Starters, Event Exclusive Pokemon, or just straight up shinies, it's such a good feeling receiving these instead of Route 1 rodents. Plus, it really helps people who might have missed these events, while at the same time making them more accessible by literally increasing their population. During Halloween and Christmas, some people like to give out a ton of really good Pokemon just for the hell of it, so although Halloween might have already passed, Christmas is coming up, so I encourage you all to participate. I'm gonna be giving away Billups, because who wouldn't want one? Chastity is the refrainment of sexual pleasure, lust, and remaining pure. I'ma keep it real. What the actual fuck? am I supposed to put here? Am I supposed to congratulate people for not wanting to fuck the Pokemon? Thanks for being normal. The fuck? This shouldn't even be a problem to begin with. I guess this can go to the poor souls whose favorite Pokemon are the ones that have been over-sexualized to all hell, liking the Pokemon for being a Pokemon and not for other reasons. I feel bad for them. People give them weird stares when they say it's their favorite, and I won't lie, I also stare because 9 times out of 10, people like them for the wrong reasons. So uh, to all the normal Pokemon fans, good job.
you did the bare minimum. Kindness is a bit of a vague term, but I mostly see this one being associated with just being nice to people or just showing gratitude and being thankful for what you have. There's so many kind souls out there willing to help people fill out their Pokedex. They have nothing to gain from that. In fact, they're actually losing time, but they do it anyway, and I think that's really nice of them. It can take hours getting everything traded over, even if you just continuously touch trade. So, I salute you all. I've also helped quite a few people fill out their Pokedex, so all I ask is that you pass it on. Trade evolutions can be a pain, and finding someone you trust enough to actually trade your Pokemon back can be even more of a pain. Seriously, they could just take off with your Pokemon and not suffer any consequences. And some people actually do that. What kind of Team Rocket bullshit is this? I know it sounds dumb, but it's actually kind of heartbreaking. They're virtual pets at the end of the day, but they're my virtual pets. Thankfully though, some people are kind enough to return your Pokemon to you safe and sound. If you have no friends to trade with, the amount of trust you need to give some random person is insane. It's like a trust fall in the dark. In Scarlet and Violet, you can make sandwiches and get boosts from them. And if someone helps you make a sandwich, they get the boost too. One of those boosts gives you a better chance at finding shiny Pokemon, which means that people can share shiny sandwiches together, making the most out of their Herba Mysticas. I was honestly shocked when I found this out. It's so helpful. I know a ton of people complain a lot about Pokemon and Game Freak, and trust me, I'm guilty of this too, but sometimes you should just try to be grateful for what you have. If you're a Pokemon fan, you don't have to worry about Pokemon content ever running out. There's always something new coming out every few months. There's fans of other series that are waiting for anything, literally anything to be announced, and sometimes it can take years, if it happens at all that is. Shout out to the World Ends With You fans, Yokai Watch fans, um, I don't know, throw in Fantasy Life 2 because we still somehow don't have a release date. It's supposed to come out in 2023. Where is it? Where is it? Level 5! What the fuck? And of course, this one is my favorite. Just teaching people about Pokemon, whether that be how the mechanics work, evolutions, shiny hunting, any questions they have, I'll happily answer them. And again, when answering them, don't belittle them. Actually help them understand and try to get them to enjoy the series too. It can be overwhelming getting into a series as old as Pokemon. There's so much to learn. So instead of deterring people, help them understand why you like the franchise so much. Temperance is moderating yourself and having self-restraint. Call it lame, but Pokemon has removed all forms of gambling in their games, which I think is really dumb because not only was it harmless, the entirety of Pokemon Masters EX is a gambling game. And arguably worse because instead of using in-game money, you use real-world money, but pfft, that's besides the point. Remember guys, apparently gambling is only good if the Pokemon company profits from it. I think this might be the reason I got a Persona sponsor before a Pokemon one. They really don't like me. A ton of people only use a Pokemon because it has good stats. And yeah, that's fair. If it's gonna be on your team, you wouldn't want it to be dead weight. But some people use Pokemon not because they have good stats, but just because they like them. And I think these people honestly have the most fun playing Pokemon. Being completely carefree when it comes to stats. Bad nature? Oh well. My Pokemon has like seven weaknesses? Yeah, but it's so cute! They truly have a pure and wonderful experience. And I wish I could be like them. They're also unintentionally making the game more fun by using weaker Pokemon, requiring you to come up with better strategies to make the most out of their party of weaklings. There's a ton of hacked Pokemon out there, and some people take them regardless, whether that be because they don't care if it's hacked, they don't realize it, or because releasing a shiny Pokemon just feels wrong. I can't do it. Some people, however, stick to their guns and absolutely refuse to have any hacked Pokemon at all, and that takes some pretty strong will. I have a ton of respect for those people. They're tempted by these hacked Pokemon but decline the offer, choosing to take the longer route instead of taking shortcuts. Truly inspirational. Patience is pretty self-explanatory. Hold on, give me a bit. See, you get it. Patience is the ability to tolerate delay without getting angry. Upset. I think the people who are the most patient of all are shiny hunters. Seriously, it's impressive. It can take thousands of encounters to find what they're looking for. And thankfully, there's many ways to increase your odds. But full-odd shiny hunters refuse to do any of that. I would never in my life try to full-odd shiny hunt. I just want to get my goods and go. But some of you are dead set on doing full odds. I don't know if I should congratulate you or call someone. Blank twice if you need help. This isn't just limited to shiny hunters though. In more recent years, people want to rush through their games wanting to be the first to complete them, and as a result, not getting a chance to actually enjoy it. Some people do this to dodge spoilers, but is it really worth ruining your experience rushing through a game instead of just not opening Twitter? To those who take their time to smell the flowettes, explore every area, do everything, and just chill out over the course of the game, I think you guys are the greatest. You do what you want to do at your own pace, no matter what other people are doing. On top of that, we have people patient enough to fill out their entire Pokedex. I usually fill mine out throughout my journey just so it isn't a 
struggle at the end. But again, like shiny hunters, there's a higher tier of these people. People patient enough to fill out an entire living Pokedex. That's actually insane. This includes every Pokemon, every gender difference, every form, every regional variant, and probably more. Just imagine if they added shiny to that criteria. I have no idea if anyone's actually gone and completed one, but it's a scary thought. Diligence is persistent effort towards a goal, not allowing yourself to be distracted, staying focused. There is no shortage of diligence in the Pokemon community. We have a ton of fans creating fan games and doing absolutely insane things with them. Things I didn't even know were possible. And these fan games can take years of work to create. Of course, this can also apply to artists who create fan art of Pokemon, or even Pokemon content creators, like me. It takes a lot of hard work to constantly come up with new ideas and not get burnout, but I do my best every week. Much like shiny hunting, getting a Pokemon with perfect IVs can be a nightmare, taking hours upon hours of just hatching eggs non-stop. Thankfully, things like the Destiny Knot and more recently Bottle Caps do help a ton, but to those who spent hours getting those IVs legit in older Pokemon games, you have some serious dedication, and I think we've officially cleansed all of our sins. I almost couldn't think of anything positive about the community, and I think that's mostly because my perception has been clouded by all of the toxicity. So, I asked all of you to help me out, and you guys did. You all gave really great examples of the good in the Pokemon community, and I think it's pretty fitting that you were all kind enough to give me a helping hand. So, thank you everyone. In case you missed my 7 sins of the Pokemon community video, go watch it. Anyways, like the video, comment, subscribe, follow my socials, join the Discord. My bill up arrived! Goodbye everyone.